everyone, my name is Erica, and today I wanna to share with you a story of how I let someone take my creativity away and how I found it again. So looking back, I actually can't believe this is something that happened to me because to this present day, my life is so full of creativity that I can't even imagine not living a creative life. But I am super grateful that this happened to me and I wanted to share this story because I hope to inspire people who have lost their creativity to be in touch with it again because it's not something that anyone can take from you. It's something that you can cultivate on your own and find again. And I don't want you to lose hope for that. So I have been a lifelong artist and I've been creating and making art since I was a little kid. I've always used it as a tool for self-expression, for healing, for relaxation, and it's something I always just really enjoyed. You know, it just brought me so much happiness just to paint or draw. In high school, my passion for it developed further when I felt really supported by my teachers. I was getting really good grades in art and I was being told that I was good at it and I'll never forget this time when we had this assignment to take the Mona Lisa and recreate it into your own style. It was the last day of class and I got the assignment back and the teacher gave me 12 out of 10 and I was so happy. I remember walking out of the class and he called my name and I looked back and he just told me never stop drawing, never stop drawing. And that advice really, really stuck to me and made me fall deeper in love with art because someone actually believed in my ability. I always knew I wanted to be an artist, you know? I always dreamt about it. When someone asked me as a kid what I wanted to be when I'm older, I said I wanted to be a painter, an artist. And I even remember playing the game of life and whenever I got the artist career card, that made me so happy because that's what I wanted to do. I ended up going to university for fine arts and I majored in painting. That really changed everything for me because that was when I didn't feel as supported as I did in high school and you know it was a lot more critiques and grading and I'm not saying that that is a bad thing but for me and my journey it was really really hard. I was just really young. I believed everything that everyone said about my art. If someone said it was good, I was like, oh, okay, it's good. If someone said it was bad, then I really believed them too. I really struggled to find my voice in university. I didn't know how to express myself in a way where I didn't feel judged because everything was always on critique. You know, someone would always be like, oh, why did you do that line? Why did you choose that color? And sometimes simply I didn't have an answer for why I chose that color. It's just something that I wanted to do. Intuitively, I felt like that color looked good. So I ended up majoring in painting, which was my greatest love. And it was my fourth year, my bachelor's degree and it was my final critique with the professor. He said to me, he said, hmm, I don't think you should pursue painting. And in that moment, I didn't even hear what he said other than that, but all I heard was those words. I don't think you should pursue painting anymore. That was absolutely soul crushing, you know? Hear that from my professor, to hear that from someone who had a lot more experience in the painting industry than me, to hear that from someone who was, you know, and well involved in the gallery world, that really, really crushed my ego and my creative spirit. I remember going home that day and crying and crying and crying and thinking, wow, maybe he is right. Maybe I shouldn't pursue painting. Looking back, I really, really struggled in art school. As I said, I couldn't find my voice and maybe that's the whole point, you know? It's a whole journey of finding yourself. But in those four years, I never found myself. That moment really just changed everything and I end up barely graduating from art school. I got the worst grades ever because I just didn't want to try anymore, you know? I was scared to even to even put work in because I just thought it wouldn't matter. I kept comparing myself to everyone and I would see people create art and speak about it so beautifully and articulately and I 
didn't know how to speak about my art because I was so shy. I didn't even participate in the graduation show, which is a huge, huge component of of graduation is to have a final show where you get to show your work. I was too scared to, so I didn't participate. I stayed home for graduation because of what my professor said, that I shouldn't pursue painting anymore. That was a really big turning point in my life because I remember going home and just looking at all my art supplies and thinking like, you know, this it's not for me. So I actually ended up packing all my art supplies away. After creating and painting pretty much my whole life, I stopped painting for two years because he said that. In those two years, those are really difficult years for me. You know, the time when you're just newly graduated and you're like, what do I do with my life? I thought I had knew what I wanted to do so firmly in my heart, but going to art school proved otherwise. So in those two years, I did what any early 20 year old did. I did a lot of soul searching and I decided to go traveling. I traveled the world to find myself again and I actually dove into a lot of meditation and yoga and really started to connect to myself to my own voice and to my own body, which I think is so crucial when you want to be a creative person. I remember I was in Hawaii at one point and I heard of this lady who was doing Reiki sessions, which is kind of an energy healing type of technique. And I was like, sure, I'm going to try it. So I ended up having a session with her. And at the very end of the session, she hands me this red flower. She's like, I don't know why I have to give you this red flower, but the spirit guides told me to give it to you, so I just have to give it to you. And I remember looking at this red flower and it was so beautiful. The place that I was living at in Hawaii had a little art shed. It was like a space for people to create art. And so I took that red flower into the art shed. I took out some watercolor paints and I painted for the first time in two years. And it was such a freeing experience for me because it was the first time in so many years that I was painting without thinking about what anyone thought. I was just doing it for myself. I wasn't doing it to show anyone. I wasn't doing it to show it in a gallery or have it critiqued. I was just doing it for myself simply because it felt good in my heart and soul. From that one painting of the red flower, I end up creating a whole series of watercolor paintings, which somehow led me to having a show there and selling my first painting, which is absolutely mind boggling when I think about that now, because I wasn't creating art with the intention to sell it. I was just creating it for the pure enjoyment of it. Having that experience completely changed my relationship to creativity. I realize that creativity is something that has to be nurtured. I kind of dropped it off for two years and I let it dry up, I let it shrink, and I didn't even look at it. You know, I didn't even, even want to go there. But after I painted that painting of the red flower, I was able to nourish that part of myself again. I was able to reconnect to that part of myself again. And I realized that the more that I did it, the more that creativity came. I don't regret going to art school. That's not the whole point. I just can't believe I let one person say that I should not be an artist can't dictate two years of my life. I definitely learned a lot from that experience. You know, it led me to the path of becoming an art therapist. I truly, truly, truly believe that everyone is born to create everyone has a voice to share and no voice is wrong so if you have a desire to create to share your art i really encourage you to do so and if you have a experience where someone told you your artwork wasn't good or maybe someone made fun of you or maybe your own inner critic is so loud sometimes telling you that you're not good enough don't listen to that let yourself just create without judgment i know it's a lot 
easier than it sounds, but it just takes practice. I've been trying to show up every day to my creative practice for the past five years and I'm really committed to this path of living a creative life and I am so fulfilled because I'm able to express myself, I'm able to have an outlet to color, to draw, to paint, all of it. It just makes me so happy and I know that creating art is a really big tool for self-expression. It really calms our mind, it relaxes our body, it puts us in the meditative state, it gives us self-esteem, it boosts our self-confidence. There are so many advantages to having a strong creative practice. And when I think back of those two years that I didn't have a creative practice, I was really depressed. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't have an outlet. I was always pent up full of so many emotions because I didn't know how to express myself. Words do not come easy for me and art does. And so the fact that I let someone shut my artistic voice down just because he didn't think that I couldn't become a painter is crazy to me looking back now. The reason why I want to share this story is because I just want anyone to know who's struggling with creativity to know that it's something that you have to cultivate and nurture yourself. You have to show up to the easel, to your desk, to whatever creative practice you have, and you have to keep showing up. And it's easy to have someone tear you down and say that you don't like your work, but I just want to remind you that your voice is unique. There is no one else in the world that has your unique expression. So please express yourself. And especially now when we're living in the age of social media, there is all this constant comparison of looking at other artists and seeing like, oh wow, they're doing so much better than me or like, you know, all these different things. And a lot of us end up taking 10,000 classes, tries to learn from all these artists. But really, I guarantee you, you have your own unique voice. You just have to trust yourself. Even after so many years of painting, when I'm painting at the easel, when I'm painting in the canvas, I still have moments where I don't trust myself. But you know what? I keep showing up and I keep doing it because the more I do it, the more I trust myself and the easier it gets. I really hope that you learned something today from the story that I shared or maybe I hope to inspire you a little bit. I'm not sharing the story once again to discredit art school or discredit art cr critics or professors or whatever. I am just sharing it simply because it was a significant part of my creative journey and it led me to where I am today, where I am just so happy in my career as a painter and an art therapist. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Every week I have videos on creativity, on art therapy activities, and just painting in general. If you are interested in the therapeutic art journey, I am offering one-on-one -on -one online sessions. So if you are interested, please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions on what it is, how it works. I would love to chat with you about it. I'm sending everyone all love and I'll see you next week.